Today I am working on making my cinnamon raisin bread. This is a recipe that I developed using some recipes from that I found on the internet, but also inspired by um, some of my favorite bread from a local bakery called Moxie. Just to recap, because I've already I'm already partway through this process, I made the same recipe that I make for the sourdough tartine country loaf. So that is taking a newly fed starter that had been sitting overnight for about six hours, um, taking 200 grams of that plus 700 grams of water plus 1,000 grams of mixed flour. I did 20% whole wheat and 80% bread flour. And I mixed that up and then I let it rest for 45 minutes for the auto lies so that the water, the flour could really um, hydrate with the water. Then I added my 20 grams of salt and 50 grams of water and I mixed it again. So again, I have a much more detailed video about the overall country loaf recipe and I can put the link in my notes below. But um, this is really the same, the first two turns, as it were, are exactly the same as making the country loaf. So at this point on the third turn, now that um, the water and flour, the water and salt have been incorporated, I'm gonna add my ingredients, which are the raisins. So I had this box of raisins, it's actually really old. And so one thing you can do if you have old raisins in your pantry that might've dried out, you can soak them in a little bit of water for about 30 minutes um, and that will actually help plump them up. But I actually went and got some beautiful golden jumbo raisins uh, from my grocery store. We get raisins from a local, from the farmer's market as well. If you can use really nice, really plump raisins, it will make a difference in your finished product. So I highly recommend that. So again, this country loaf recipe would make two loaves of raisin bread. And so uh, if you wanted to only make one loaf of raisin bread, you can also divide your recipe at this point. You could do one loaf that's the country loaf and one loaf that's cinnamon bread. So I mentioned that because the amount of raisins that you want to use will vary based on whether you're making one loaf or two. I find that I like to have about one and a half cups of raisins for each loaf. So I'm going to try to get to three cups. And of course, this is kind of flexible. So here I have two and a half cups. Just to give you the measurement, that two and a half cups of raisins is 279 grams, which is what I was expecting. I would think it would be close to 300 grams ideally, but this particular package I think got skimmed off the top a little bit. And so we have 279 grams. What you wanna do with this, some, um, sometimes you can consider either adding half now and half later. I like to add all my raisins in at the same time just because it gives them more time to get distributed. But I just kind of dump them all on here. And this is the key, is I'm gonna wet my hands a little bit just for sticky for stick prevention. Um, but here, instead of doing your normal turn where you would just pull it up four directions, if you did that, you would just basically envelop your mass of raisins inside the middle of the dough. So I'm gonna actually do a little bit, kind of what the same motion I do when I incorporate salt, which is to squeeze the raisin throughout. And in particular, I wanna turn the bread around and make sure that there isn't a big hidden pocket of raisins in there. So I, I just found a pocket here and I'm gonna just break that up. And so even though this is not exactly the stretch and fold that you would normally do in a turn, um, I think it's really important when you add your raisins to make sure that they're well distributed and that they're not creating kind of a hidden treasure trove in the middle of your dough. So then you can kind of do your normal stretch and fold motion a little bit here um, in all four directions. And then once I've done the stretch and fold, this dough is very nice and soft today. Once I've done that in all four directions, I'm gonna just let that develop the way you would with the normal country loaf. So I'm gonna give that a cover up and put it in my nice warm place, which is my oven with the 
oven light on. For some other people, it might be on top of your fridge or just in a place with no drafts. And I'm gonna check on it again in about 30 minutes. So it's been about 30 minutes and I'm just gonna do the next turn. This would normally be the fourth turn for the bread. And at this point, um, the bread has been going for about two hours. I'm gonna hold it up on the edge over here. You can see there are a few little bubbles. So it is showing signs of development, but I do find with the raisins addition, you're not gonna see the giant bubbles that you see when you make the country loaf. And the signs of the bread being ready to shape might be a little bit more subtle. I am, I typically turn the raisin bread for an extra one or two turns, depending on how quickly those bubbles are forming. So even though that was the fourth turn, I'm gonna do one more before we shape. So I'm back just to do one more turn of the bread. I meant to get my hands wet again, always, to prevent sticking. So just the same, actually I can see that the volume of this dough has really increased. It's very spongy and light and there are some visible large bubbles. So I'm just gonna do this and again, now I'm trying to be a little more gentle because we're doing this last turn before shaping. And I'm just gonna let that sit for a minute here. Then I'm gonna turn it out. But while we're letting that just rest one more time, I'm gonna make my brown sugar cinnamon mixture. For two loaves of bread, I do this a little bit by estimate, but I'm gonna do about one cup of brown sugar. And this is brown sugar that I made by mixing white sugar and um, molasses, but you can also use store-bought brown sugar, of course. And I'm going to do about a heaping tablespoon of cinnamon here. Give that a good mix. Um, I think this is kind of to taste. If you want it a little sweeter, then you put more sugar and less cinnamon. If you want it to be really cinnamony, cinnamony. I like to make sure that I can really smell the cinnamon coming through the brown sugar because that is of the element that you want in your cinnamon raisin bread. I might add just a smidge more. I think having it cinnamon forward is nice. If I was to measure that, again, I would say that's about one heaping cup of brown sugar to maybe, actually that's a large spoon, so about three tablespoons of cinnamon. But you can see here that it's gotten to be kind of a sandy, loose mix because the cinnamon is coating all those uh, sugar granules. So that's perfect. And then the other thing I can do to prep while I'm waiting is to get my loaf pans ready. Um, you really want to oil your loaf pans. I guess I could butter them, but I tend to use a little bit of vegetable oil. I think maybe because I'm cooking at a very high heat in the oven at about 500 degrees. So I'm just gonna use a little brush and really get it into the corners of the loaf pan. And of course you want it on the sides as well. But the main thing is just, you wanna make sure that your bread turns out when you're done baking it. So I'm gonna do both of these loaf pans. Set those aside. And then I am going to go ahead and turn my bread out to let it rest. This part, again, is very much the same as you would do for a country loaf. So you pull your dough out of the bread, out of, out of the bowl, and take your bench scraper to divide it in two. I have two of these. I like the blue one just because it's curved for pulling dough out of the bowl. But this one is the best for shaping. So this is the same technique as for the country loaf. I'm gonna pull this dough ball towards me and I'm gonna sweep around and pull, sweep around and pull. Again, I didn't put any flour on the bench because I want the tackiness of the dough to help create surface tension. Now you'll see that 
with raisin bread or anything that has inclusions, you know, these, these raisins are sticking out and they kind of do break that surface tension. So it's, I find it is a little harder to break real, to make really good surface tension with this bread, but just do the best you can. You can still see that it's getting smoother except where the raisins are and kind of sitting a little higher up than this other piece. Shake the second one. Once I'm done with this, again, we're gonna let these rest for probably 10 to 15 minutes. Then I'll go ahead and do the final shaping, which adds the cinnamon sugar in and let them rise. Okay, this is the last step. The loaves have been resting for about 15 minutes. And so I'm going to do the final shaping, which is similar, but it has a slightly different technique than we have for the country loaf. So I'm gonna sprinkle the top just with a little bit of um, rice flour and AP flour combo, just to keep it from sticking as much. I'm gonna scoop it up with my bench scraper and flip it wet my fingertips a little bit. And then here, I'm actually going to spread it out as much as possible into a bit of a rectangle, maybe even a square. At this point, we're gonna do um, two layers of cinnamon sugar. So I like to actually slightly dampen the surface of this bread. I feel like it just gives a little bit of moisture to the cinnamon sugar mixture that gets a little bit gooier which makes for a nice filling. And then I'm going to somewhat evenly spread the cinnamon sugar all over the surface here. And you wanna get it edge to edge if you wanna have a nice swirl. Spread it out a little bit. And then here, I'm gonna fold the two sides in like a book. So you kinda Lift up the edge, stretch it a little bit more. Lift up the other edge, stretch it and kind of pinch it shut here. Now this might, this next part is where you get your really nice final swirl end to end. And I'm gonna look at the size of my loaf pan and kind of smush this out to be about the width of the loaf pan or maybe a little bit narrower. Make sure that this end is pinched shut. So you can see that with this cinnamon raisin bread, there's a bit more handling than there is, and I think that it's possible. I'm uh, squeezing some of the air bubbles out, but I think you'll find that the final texture is still really good. And this one as well, um, I really wanna get the cinnamon sugar all the way to the side edges because that's where the heels of your bread are going to be when you're all done. And then I'm going to use my hands or the bench scraper to scoop this up and roll it. And again, using a little water to keep from sticking too much. So I'm going to roll it like a log towards me. Then I'll take this bench scraper and scoop it up. And just plop it into the loaf pan. That's one. So I'll go ahead and scrape up some of the cinnamon sugar that we can still use and also get it out of the way for the shaping of the second loaf. So again, scoop it up, flip it over, wet your fingers, smush it out or stretch it gently into a rectangle. And then I'm going to wet the surface just lightly. You're not drenching it, you're just getting a little bit of moisture for that cinnamon sugar. And I'm going to sprinkle this all throughout. Nice even layer. Then I'm going to fold the edges in halfway. So it's about a quarter on each side, I guess. Pinch it shut all the way to the ends if possible. Then I'm gonna take my loaf pan, take a look at the side. I think I can smush this out a little bit wider again. I'm sure if I didn't squish it so flat, 
It might be a little airier, but it would be too thin and also hard to roll up. Add that cinnamon sugar again. And roll this one up. Scoop that into the loaf pan. Sometimes it sticks to the bench scraper and that's okay. So, let me just scoop all this out. With the two loaves, now just like with uh, my video on the country loaf, um, now you can sprinkle a little bit of flour on top if you want. Actually, now I'm thinking about it, I probably usually don't do that for some reason, but it does help with keeping it from sticking to your um, kitchen towel. So I can let these rest for two to three hours on the countertop at room temperature, or I can throw them into the fridge and let them chill overnight for eight to 10 hours. And today I'm gonna let them sit out at room temperature. Oh, here comes the dog. Come in. Come in. The dog. You can come in, buddy. Come on, buddy. It has been two and a half hours, and actually, I can see visually that there's some rise in the loaves. Look at how beautifully risen those are. Um, and so, I am going to put them into my oven, which I preheated to 500 degrees, just like with the uh, country loaf. We're going to score it. With the cinnamon raisin loaves, I find it simplest just to do a split top. And so we're just gonna give it a quick split there. That'll again let the bread open up a little bit. It'll give a little bit more uh, space for it to expand in the oven and also it'll just makes for some nice crags. One of the things that is different about baking with open loaf pans is we still wanna create some steam. So I'm gonna pop these into the oven and then I'm going to throw some steam in there to help with creating that nice crusty exterior on the, on the top of the bread. To do that, I'm going to put the bread in here. And then I'm going to keep my glove on and be really careful because of course the steam is very hot. Actually, I'm taking room temperature water and I've placed, if you can see down here, a uh, broiler pan at the bottom of the oven. And so I'm going to throw some water into that pan and that steam right up into my glasses. So that's all you need to do. Now I'm going to, again, turn this down to 450 degrees. And I'm going to bake it at 450 for about 20 minutes and then I'm going to check on the tops and if they're starting to show um, too much color I'm either going to cover them with foil or I might turn the oven down but I do find that overall the cinnamon raisin loaves need to bake for almost a full hour so they take a little bit longer than the country loaf. I took the bread out. One way to tell with this particular kind of bread when it's done is to check the temperature. So I used my quick read thermometer, stuck it right in the middle, kind of like a cake tester. You also want to see that your thermometer or a cake tester comes out clean. And I left these loaves in the oven until they hit 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Today, as I mentioned, I was trying something slightly new for me, which is that I baked them for 20 minutes with the steam at 450, and then I turned the temperature down to 425. In my oven, I find that if I leave it at 450, the tops get really burnt. And I do like a dark crust, but they get just excessively dark. Um, so the other technique would be to leave it at 450 and cover the tops with foil. But I think this worked out great. Um, you can see that there are some very caramelized raisins here. And actually, these are going to be too burnt to be delicious. So I would actually peel that off just to save the... Uh, my family from eating these 
kind of carbonized raisins. One of the things I mentioned, and the reason I started even making raisin bread is that there was a loaf of bread at a local bakery in Louisville, Colorado called Moxie Bread. I love Moxie and their bread is amazing, but in particular, I really loved their cinnamon raisin loaf. And one of the things they do is they kind of lacquer the top. So I'm gonna do that now. I made a mixture of basically a simple syrup. It's one tablespoon of water and one tablespoon of sugar. And it's really important to apply this when the loaf is hot. I am gonna take these out of the pan just to make it easier. Then they pop right out because we greased the sides and also those are nonstick pans. So you can see these are some beautiful full loaves of bread. But while it's hot, you wanna apply your sugar glaze and it'll make a beautiful shiny top. It'll add a little bit of crunch because the sugar glaze, the sugar glaze is going to harden just slightly. So and it just adds a little bit of extra sweetness as well. You can see that I put a piece of wax paper. You could put foil or wax paper underneath the loaf just because it's very drippy and hard to clean up. So you want to get it all the way into all these cracks. In fact, the loaf is so hot as I'm applying this, I can hear a little bit of crackling from the top, the crust of the bread, which is fun. It means it's really well baked. And just get this everywhere. Then we're just gonna let that set and also let the bread cool for about 10 to 15 minutes. And I will come back one more time to cut it open and show you what it looks like on the inside. Okay, the bread has cooled. The sugar glaze has set, and I'm gonna cut this open to take a look at how it turned out. I'm gonna put it on its side, and there we have the cinnamon raisin bread with the double swirl because of the application of the sugar and cinnamon mixture. So I'm looking forward to having a piece of this with some butter and maybe a cup of tea.